Hello everyone. So today I'll discuss about Young's double slit experiment. That is uh, a experimental setup done by Young and uh, to prove the wave nature of light. Previously, it was believed that uh, light uh, uh, travels in a straight line and uh, it's like uh, rays. So, ray optics or the geometrical optics was established all the theory of your reflection, refraction, all these are established on the basis that light is traveling in a straight line and um, their uh, particle they, means uh, they are like rays. So, when Young established uh, a theory and the experimental setup and showed that you no know, light is uh, behaving something like wave and uh, it is showing the interference pattern there interfering and we are getting some maxima and minima so uh, then the people started believing that yes light is uh, also behaving like a wave and uh, people start continued to believe that light is a wave because in eight, uh, 19th century uh, your Maxwell come up with his electromagnetic theory and he proved that light is also an electromagnetic wave and uh, then uh, your Fresnel and others they also uh, uh, proved uh, that uh, diffraction pattern, interference pattern, all these things uh, they established theory and through experiment also it is verified that light is uh, a light is behaving like a wave. Then again in the beginning of 1905, uh, uh, you can say early 20th century, again people started thinking about the particle nature of the light. Einstein established the photoelectric effect and through experimental verification also people found out that light is behaving like a particle. So the duality come up that light is behaving like both a wave and particle. So many scientists that uh, confused many scientists and they started thinking that light uh, can behave as it wants when it, when it behaves according to the situation when there is a, a metallic plate or when it is striking then some photoelectric uh, it is exhibiting the photoelectric characteristics and uh, that time light is behaving like a your particle and uh, when it is uh, passing through a slit then uh, or a narrow gap or uh, a small aperture small hole then uh, uh, it is uh, uh, behaving like wave so uh, this is interesting uh, about uh, um, it is quite interesting and uh, many people started doing research on this then uh, in this chapter basically we will discuss the uh, or in this con here in this uh, Young's double slit experiment basically we will discuss the wave nature of the light and how Young proved that uh, yes light is exhibiting uh, or light uh, is behaving like a wave so uh, generally how can you say that uh, 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 that light is uh, a wave from this experiment so what was the setup for young uh, young made two slits narrow gap slit means narrow gap right that uh, is very small this gap is very small and let's say this small gap is uh, small d uh, this uh, difference is the distance between the small gap is d and these are the slits narrow gap and let's say he put a screen here right this is your screen and screen is let's say at a capital D distance capital D from the slit and it's kept parallel to the this plane now he uh, allowed the light to come from a source let's say this is a monochromatic source monochromatic source means uh, having wavelength single wavelength right and uh, this rays comes up and when it passes through right uh, and you can say these are very small so it will come and interfere so i'm not drawing it's coming in all direction from the source so let's say it's coming in a wave and interfering at a point let's say p right on the screen 
so he found that some maxima minima like dark bright dark bright fringes are there uh, at, at that point on the screen so from this experiment he concluded that his light is behaving like a wave now then uh, why uh, we can cannot see this wave nature always in our day-to-day -day experience because you see if the wavelength is uh, very small you know the electromagnetic the white light whatever our eye can detect that basically this is a spectrum of uh, your Nibgar ballet to ray and uh, the wavelength is uh, 350 nanometer to 750 nanometer so nanometer means 10 to the power minus 9 order so it's very small basically the wave length is very small so if the obstacle is very small uh, obstacle is very big let's say so that uh, the small wavelength they will come and hit and come back so it is exhibiting your reflection and all this principle now also if the gap is very big then wavelength is very small right so it will pass through it now if you will reduce the gap that's why we have taken narrow gap in the order of millimeter let's say one mm or less than that show that this wave will interact at its edge and some kind of interference you will able to see on the screen right then only you can ob observe the wave nature of the light so in day to day the wavelength is very small so that it is we cannot see the wave nature we are all see we, we see uh, our light is behaving as a uh, as a ray and uh, we can see that yes light is moving in a straight line you can do in class uh, in your junior classes taking two three holes and uh, putting a candle here and you will observe from that that uh, you can see the light if all the lines all the holes are aligned if will move one hole then you will not able to see the light that proves that light is traveling in one straight line and in a straight path basically the holes are big in nature right that's why you are not able to see the light right that's uh, or it is passing in a uh, in a straight line because your length are same it is not interacting with the side of the edges of the hole right so uh, this is the setup for your Young, um, Young's experiment, and uh, these are two slits. Slits means exactly suppose very narrow gap. If I'll put this to very sharp edge, very small gap is there. Light will pass, right? And I put a screen here, and I try to uh, see the pattern that is on my screen. Now two slits, two narrow gap, two narrow gaps are there here and here and light allowed to pass through the narrow gap uh, two slits so what he ob observed he observed that maximum minimum so we'll calculate the basically suppose let's say from the middle let's say this is your center let's say this distance is y right and uh, from the center let's say it's making an angle theta so if it is theta we will consider this uh, these are this uh, capital d is very uh, larger very large as compared to the small d and uh, we will consider that the lies these rays are almost parallel so these angles also we will consider all are approximately theta very small and this, this will be let's say not very big these are very small and uh, these rays are approximately parallel so all these are uh, let's say theta now if we will calculate the path difference between these two waves the path difference we will calculate let's say we will join here so let's say the second wave which is from let's say slit 2 this is slit 1 so slit 2 to p has traveled let's say this much of distance delta l extra this is the path difference that is your h 2 p minus s 1 p this is your delta L which is path difference which is the path difference and this one in terms of uh, if this is theta and this is your 90 degree and right so this will be your theta this will be your theta this is your 90 minus theta right you can uh, 
uh, you can prove it right so then this delta l will be what this is theta so delta l by d is your p by h that is your sine theta so you can write that uh, this is p by h p by h so sine theta or you can say your this is your d l dl by uh, l d delta l by d is sine theta so you can write delta l by d is sin theta or you can say your path reference sin theta d sin theta is delta l your d sin theta is delta l which is the path difference now how path difference is important and how this path difference will give you the constructive and destructive interference uh, black i mean it's a dark and bright fringe now try to understand this is care this carefully so now you see if two waves are in in phase in phase means they are starting and ending same like this same then you will get a maximum here because this maxima this maxima you it will get a more amplified version right so you will get a bright here you will get a bright fringe here if two waves are in phase if two waves are out of phase out of phase means if one wave is like this and another wave is moving like this another wave is moving like this if another wave is moving like this that means its maxima its minima so they will cancel each other so destructive interference you will get a dark fringe you will get so when the maxima maxima will match that means they are in phase then you will get a bright fringe you will get a bright fringe you will get a bright fringe and if maxima minima they are in opposite you will get a dark fringe so this is out of phase this is in phase so you will get a bright fringe and you will get dark fringe right so this one this is a dark fringe and this is your middle suppose white portion this is for where for saying it's a bright fringe and we will find out also the width the width of this dark fringe and width of this bright fringe this difference we will find out so the difference between two maxima will give you the fringe width or difference between two minima also you will get the dark fringe now you see we are talking about in phase now so how you will get out of phase you see when they are in phase then either they are path difference is zero that means they are starting at same point so their path difference delta l will be zero right that will happen when this p point will be here both are traveling same distance same maxima and this source must be coherent same phase that must be in same phase so that will get and uh, the wavelength will be also a monochromatic wavelength so now you see if we are getting here so they will travel same distance so delta l is zero no path difference if there is no path difference that means their starting point is same and they are in phase right delta l is zero so and if also you you will get a path difference lambda that means from here to from here to here one wave or from starting point here to this point this is also one wavelength right this is also one, one wavelength now if this will start late that means phase difference will be let's say 2 pi this is pi this is 2 pi if phase difference will be 2 this means the wave is starting from here so that means again after this it will match the wave if phase difference is 2 pi or you can say lambda then then you will 
you will also get the bright fringe that means if your delta l if your path difference your delta l if we say it's m lambda then you will get then you will get a bright fringe because the relation between phase difference and path difference phase difference phase difference phi equal to 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda your delta l path difference path length difference right so phase difference equal to 2 pi by lambda path difference if path difference is your lambda that means one complete wave is uh, difference right then then your lambda lambda cancelled out that means 2 pi phase difference so phase difference 2 pi means they are also in phase so we will get a bright fringe here right so if delta l is lambda or 2 lambda or 3 lambda or 4 lambda that means you will get the same uh, because both peak will match right if it is if this wave phase is 1 lambda then after 1 lambda this phase will match its peak phase means its peak should same right peak peak should match that that they are in phase even if it is starting a little bit before or after no issue so if their phase is matching that means when it is at peak high it is also at its peak that means they are in phase right now when its peak is here but the second wave is at the bottom then they are not in phase they are out of phase right so that will happen when at least the path difference is lambda by 2 if the path difference is lambda or lambda by 2 that means if the path difference is m plus half lambda right if the path difference is the multiple of your m plus half by lambda m is equal to 0 m is equal to 0 1 2 like that right if the path difference is the m plus half lambda that means m will start from 0 so for 0 it's lambda by 2 we will get the first minima or first dark fringe right so it will be the dark fringe it will be the dark fringe for m equal to 0 it will give the, the path difference is lambda by 2 that means the second wave is lambda by 2 before the first wave right so it will start lambda by 2 so that means when it is peak it will be at its bottom that means there will, there will be destructive interference like this so uh, they will cancel each other so that a dark fringe you will get you will get a darkness here so when they are in phase that means the multiple of lambda it is here it is lambda before then also their peak will match right they will be in phase lambda either 2 lambda their difference is let's say this difference is 2 lambda that means 1 2 lambda also you will get a bright 3 lambda 4 lambda that means multiple of lambda you will get the bright fringe multiple of lambda by 2 you will get the bright uh, dark fringe that means first lambda by 2 difference you will get a dark fringe next lambda plus lambda by 2 that is half plus 1 lambda this is you can say first lambda by 2 you can write in this way that is 0 plus half lambda this is 1 plus half lambda so you are getting a general formula m plus f 0 1 always half lambda so next will come again lambda so 2 plus 2 lambda plus lambda by 2 that will come 2 plus half lambda so that means 5 by 2 lambda so in all this difference between 1 and 2 you will get a dark fringe right if your path difference is multiple of your lambda by 2 that means 
your uh, m plus half lambda by 2 or odd multi odd number into lambda by 2 then you will get a dark fringe so now let us find out the formula for your fringe width and so let so this is what we got for your uh, dark fringe and bright fringe fine so if theta is very small if theta is very small we can write that sin theta is equal to approximately equal to sin theta approximately equal to theta which is equal to delta l by d delta l by d uh, delta l is uh, your m lambda so m lambda by small d now if we will take find out the y n where you will get the means from the center which distance at what distance you will be getting a maxima then let's say this distance we are writing as a y n the distance from the center at the from to the p so if we we'll consider that this distance this is a right angle triangle this one show your p by b y by this cap, this distance is capital d is your tan theta so tan theta equal to let's say theta small equal to your y n by y m we are taking m y m by capital d now from equation one and two you can see theta equal to m lambda by small d theta equal to y m by d so we can write from 1 and 2 we can write m lambda small d equal to y m by capital d right y m is thus uh, your uh, distance right y m is your distance so y m equal to multiply m lambda by small d capital d so this is your distance from the center where you will get the m if you are calculating multiplying so you are basically you are getting where you will get the maxima right where you will get the maxima from the center now where you will get the minimum instead of m you will multiply m plus half m plus half lambda right so instead of m lambda you will write m plus half lambda you will get the minima so he, here you are getting the expression for maxima or bright fringe right now next maxima where you will get suppose the first maxima you are getting here now the second maxima you will get here that will be basically y m plus 1 you will get the next maxima so next maxima you will get next maxima you will get y m plus 1 which is your m plus 1 lambda suppose this is for third path difference 3 you are getting a path difference a 3 lambda you are getting the maxima here path difference 4 lambda you will get the maxima here like that so the difference we will find out the fringe width so next maxima you will get y m plus 1 that means m will be replaced with m plus 1 lambda capital d by d now the fringe width fringe width right will be the difference between y m plus 1 minus y m so important term is fringe width many times this question comes calculate the fringe width or calculate the capital d the distance between screen screen and the uh, your slit or slit width also sometimes in the exam asked so this formula is very much important you should remember so fringe width fringe width sometimes it is denoted with beta so fringe width beta equal to y m plus 1 this is what we are calculating for the difference between two maximum to maximum also you can calculate the difference between two minima the same result you will get so y m plus 1 minus y m which you can write 
m plus 1 y m plus 1 lambda capital D by small d minus m lambda d by d so m lambda d m lambda d cancelled out so it is beta equal to your lambda beta equal to this m lambda m lambda d by d m lambda d by d cancelled out so your lambda d by d is your fringe wood and this one we have calculated using the two consecutive maxima or bright fringes we have subtracted the distance between them and uh, we got the the width of the fringe what is the width this is the width of the fringe we are getting right so this is what your young's double slit experiment in which he tried to explain that where the maxima and minima you will get from the center of your uh, let's say you join from the midpoint of the slit to a point in the screen so from this midpoint where you are getting the next maximums this is what uh, your uh, Young's double slit experiment tells us and very importantly Young's double slit experiment sometimes question us why uh, or what was the purpose of the experiment to prove or this experiment tells us about the gives a experimental verification of the wave nature of the light right so uh, in the next video we will discuss interference and the intensity also the diffraction Fresnel, Fresnel and uh, crown hopper so all these things we will be discussing in next upcoming videos so you practice some numericals based upon the pro uh, formula and try to understand the concept and mainly the path reference and phase reference how the path reference when it is lambda how you are getting maxima I, I hope I try to ex I have explained it uh, uh, clearly if you still find that this terms and how you are getting maxima and minima still not clear then write in the comment box so that I can uh, clarify your doubt I can try to make another video thank you for watching see you in another video